Eric, to you first. A couple of fascinating things about this debate, but let's start with the fact that you have these conservatives, especially most of the new conservatives in town, and they flat out, and we talked a bit about this before, but they flat out don't trust their leadership. Never mind the fight with President Obama and the Democratic-controlled Senate. They don't trust their own leadership in the House to cut as deeply as they think is necessary. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm hearing that from a lot of them. Uh, a lot of them are very, dis uh, very concerned. Uh, you were about to hearing. say disappointed. Yeah, well, no, I, I was going to say, I was about to misspeak, and I caught myself. You gotta, okay. I, I'm Cajun and Swedish. That happens sometimes. Um, it, it, you know, they're hearing from Eric Cantor and from John Boehner mixed signals about what's going to go on. And I think you're about to see the conservative new members of the House, Republicans, take control themselves. It's going to be an interesting test for John Boehner. A, a lot of what Tim, Co Tim Scott said in your interview, John, I think would actually resonate with many independent voters. When you start talking about generational responsibility and the generational theft that is deficit in the debt, the reality is, though, that any spending cuts meaningfully, it's not going to be non-defense discretionary. You've got to get into entitlement reform to have a meaningful change in the deficit and the debt. And that's something that the politicians have been afraid to do, but it's absolutely necessary. And if they did it, I think they'd find a lot of independents were in their quarter. And that's why that was the most fraudulent conversation you've ever heard. The House Republican Study Committee, they put forth at $2.5 trillion in cuts. Not a single dime for defense. Now, they can't stand here and try to protect their special interest area, defense, when the Democrats are then going to turn around and protect Social Security and Medicaid. I had Tom Price, the chairman of this group, on my TV One show, Washington Watch. He said two weeks ago, everything's on the table. Well, what happened? to get thrown off the table, and so Republicans can't stand here and talk about deficit control and spending if they are unwilling to confront defense spending. But Roland is, Roland is absolutely right on that point, and I'm disheartened to see that, that they took defense off the table. There are plenty of ways to cut defense contractors. The Pentagon has a slew of projects that they don't want, but members of Congress are telling them they have to pay for it. On the one hand, you have to applaud them for being specific. You can disagree with their cuts if you're watching at home. On the one hand, you applaud them for being specific. They're having the courage to say, we would cut this. My question is, what happens when the president has the power of the bully pulpit, and you know what he's going to do here? He's going to say, I've proposed some cuts, and I know my base is mad at me because I'm open to even doing Social Security and Medicare. But what you're doing, especially when the states have no money, is being mean-spirited. The president's going to, that's the argument the Democrats will make about the Republicans. Will they hold firm? Oh, I think the Republicans are going to hold firm. The leadership, not as much as the, the new members, but you'll definitely see some real movement to push the Republican leadership further in spending cuts. But that's not going to be the problem. The problem was not going to be the president. To be honest, the problem are going to be the American taxpayers. Right. If you saw what happened in Camden, New Jersey this week, Dara Red, the mayor there, she said we had a budget shortfall, we're at 45% of the police force, all of a sudden right. people begin to freak out. And so taxpayers are going to have to say, wait a minute, I can't keep asking for more and more. That CBS poll was amazing. They don't want cuts, and they don't, they don't want Medicaid cut, Social Security cut, but they all, the same number of 69%, they want to see the deficit cut. So at some point, the taxpayer is going to have to say, I can't have it all. Can't have cut deficit, but keep my spending. As to, to borrow from Ross Perot, John Avalon, the devil's in the details, right? <laughs> it, it always is. But look, if the president opens the door to entitlement reform in the State of the Union and Republicans turn that opportunity down because it's not enough, that would be so self-defeating, not only for fiscal conservatism, but generational responsibility. They've got to find a way to work together on this. If the doors open on entitlement reform, that is a huge opportunity to move this debate forward.